We'd like to welcome everybody to the Beaver Horn Hall of the Meeting, and tonight we have some special guests with me. And, you know, during the COVID times, it's, I know everybody's probably like me, you kind of, you're not able to communicate with everybody like you'd like to. So, my guest tonight is called up of the city of Newburn that she actually came to City Hall to address a letter to the city about a very serious topic. And I said, well, if you're kind enough to do that and not mail it to me, why don't I let you read it? So we're going to do that in a minute. So to start the meeting off, we'd like to welcome everybody. And at this time, the third night, we, we give my all the best. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, citizens, tonight I would like for Ms. Um, Reverend Ethel Sampson to give a prayer, please. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord, everybody. Tonight, I, I was thinking of a beautiful prayer that was that, that, that Jesus told the disciples to say in his very he said him for this occasion. Our Father, who is in heaven, how would be thy name? Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily prayer. Forgive us our trespasses. And we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Okay, this time we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you like to join? Okay, come around up there and tell everybody to. You ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Alderman Bingle? Here. Alderwoman Harris? Here. Alderman Astor? Here. Mayor Outlaw? Here. Alderman Kinsey? Here. Alderman Bess? Present. Alderman Odom? Here. Okay. At this time, we're going to have petitions to citizens, and our first petition is from Kate Marshall. And if you would come forward and, and read, and uh, you actually have four minutes to say what you want to say about city government. I know that I read in the letter you're interested in being mayor at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so you can read about that and uh, anything else you think you ought to be doing. Four minutes. Dear Mr. Outlaw, first of all, I think you have the coolest name of all time. My name is Jacqueline Marshall and I am 10 years old. I am writing to inquire about Halloween on October 31st. Due to COVID-19, children and adults must wear masks for safety reasons. However, people can still spread germs by touching candy wrappers so as to hand, them out, hand the candy out. Then, when trick-or-treaters go to eat any candy, they too will touch the candy. I find this to be a serious problem that should be addressed, and I beg of you not to cancel Halloween, because us kids really love our candy. <laughs> Luckily, I have a suggestion. Could you make it a law, or at least a rule, that if you're handing out candy, you must wear gloves, preferably non-plastic, so as to help with the plastic problem? Also, not to be rude, when you introduce yourself as Mr. Outlaw, do people think you're a bandit? <laughs> um, my dad, he's over there. Um, he had another idea of what to do because people, uh, the main thing with COVID to stop the spread is to social distance. So he thinks that the people who are handing out candy should just leave like a basket outside and the kids should come and grab it with their gloves so that they're social distancing. Thank you. I really thank for your letter. We um, every Friday the Metro managers of the 30 largest cities of in North Carolina, Newburgh being one of them. We we have a phone conference call, and for the last four weeks, um, planning ahead, this this topic has come up uh, and what the city is going to do. So we will be taking that up. And I thank you so much for that letter. Thank you. Okay. So at this time, uh, Reverend Reverend Evan Saxon, I forgot you were. We're going to be speaking, or I'll let you go first. Come on back up. Thank you. 
while she's coming up, Mayor, I just wanted to make a point that in the West, whenever the United States was being formed, that marshals were often used to take out outlaws. <laughs> I've got a couple of good ones to with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I received an unsigned letter Friday, and I thought that when I come to the Board of Auto meeting, if I was still living, I would bring it and let the people listen to it. And, and to prove it, this is the, the mark, postmark September 1st, my name on it. It said, Mrs. Sampson. Thank you for your outstanding work and tireless effort in supporting the community. Y'all want Standard White Recreation Center to be real built on the same location. But the reality is, it is not going to happen. The plans were made already without the community input. In their mind, the area is too run down, in too many dilapidated houses, unkept yards, to build a million dollar building. They want to put it in a location where the whites can attend without being threatened. In a sense, I can understand. The drug culture has brought pain, misery, and enslavement to our people. I remember our people had pride and dignity. Some protest Black Lives Matter, but a black man is taking the lives of one another. Some dress like thugs and hooligans. We have issues we need to solve ourselves. God looks at a person's heart not their skin color. When God looks down from heaven, he doesn't see one race, he sees the human race. Thank you again for your support and hard work for the community. Only God can straighten the mess the world is in. Only God has the power, qualities, and ability to solve the problem of the racism, discrimination, injustice. He will and is not going to be long. Thank you all for letting me read this letter. Okay, do we have any more petitions of citizens? Madam Clerk? No, sir. Okay, this time let's go to the consent agenda. Mayor, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion to second. Is there discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, motion to say aye. 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 All in favor, aye. All in favor say aye. Uh, Mr. Christine, let's go to item number seven. Thank you, Mayor. Um, item number seven is a public hearing on the 2020-2021 CDBG Draft Annual Action Plan. Uh, this is something that comes up every year that uh, we review, and at this time I'm going to turn it over to Amanda Owen-Salen, who's here to do a presentation on this uh, annual action plan and answer any kind of questions the board may have. Good evening, Mayor. I'm board that better? Yes. Okay. Can y'all hear me okay? Um, good evening. Tonight, as uh, the city manager uh, stated, I will be giving a brief over the uh, 2020 annual action plan for our community development block grant program. Um, I'll be doing a brief presentation, and then you all are asked to consider calling a public hearing um, to uh, get citizen input on the draft plan. Um, as the city manager mentioned, this is an annual process um, through HUD. It's a requirement for us to uh, go through a series of public meetings um, and display the draft plan for input uh, by our residents. Um, and this plan is basically a strategic plan for how we will implement um, and execute activities to spend our CDBG entitlement allocation. Um, and as uh, you all will remember we recently updated our five-year consolidated plan, which outlines our longer-term and five-year strategies uh, to address community needs. For the 2020 allocation, we have received uh, $258,814 um, to go toward uh, three areas um, that we have uh, devised in the draft plan, um, including general administration. We are allowed up to 20% of our annual entitlement allocation to go toward administration of the program. Uh, we have identified um, $107,000 to go toward housing rehabilitation and another $100,000 to go toward the Duffy Field Stormwater Enhancement uh, Project for phase two of that particular project. In addition, this year, as part of our annual action plan, which is a little bit different than past years, 
we are receiving $152,000 approximately of CDBGCV funds. Uh, this is related to the CARES Act and a $2 billion um, amount of money that went to HUD to respond, prepare for, um, and uh, do activities in the community to um, better prepare for or respond to the coronavirus or COVID-19. Uh, we are um, proposing for $137,000 of that to go toward rent and utility assistance for our citizens, um, for subsistence payments um, to help protect against um, uh, disconnects or uh, evictions. Um, and another portion of that, uh, $15,000 will go toward uh, administration of those funds uh, to monitor that program as well. Um, here's a breakdown of these projects. Um, this is all outlined in the draft plan, but it's a pretty lengthy document, so I just wanted to go over some of the highlights. Uh, the first one is administration. You can see that it basically covers staff salaries, um, you know, cost to administer the program, certain materials, uh, mailings, cost of notices in the, in the newspaper, um, as well as monitoring of any subrecipients. Uh, the other 2020 projects that are proposed are ha housing rehabilitation in the Five Points area. These funds would be um, given to the Redevelopment Commission of New Bern uh, for rehabilitation work of rental properties uh, within the community. And that would be a multi-year activity. The um, additional funds to go toward the Duffyfield Stormwater Project would cover any engineering, permitting, and possible acquisition of phase two of that engineering project. Um, as you will remember, um, you all approved a contract and phase one construction of that um, project is underway right now uh, to cover a sub-basin in the Duffyfield community to protect against uh, flooding um, and improve uh, general safety and appearance within the community as well. Uh, finally, the uh, CDBGCB, the response to the coronavirus um, pandemic, would provide funds uh, to a nonprofit agency to uh, issue rent and utility assistance payments um, to eligible applicants. Um, so there would be certain eligibility criteria that those individuals would have to meet, including um, residency and income requirements. Excuse me. So um, as you can see, we're also required to um, make sure that all of the activities that we're doing meet a national objective and are um, an eligible activity under HUD. Um, all of the activities we have proposed um, for this program year will benefit low to moderate income individuals. Um, there is a, a certain percentage of funds that could go toward um, you know, not benefiting uh, low-income individuals, but for this program year, all of our funds would go toward that. In addition, um, addressing housing affordability is a key uh, need that we identified through our five-year con um, process. Um, and you can see that based on the allocation of the CDBG CV funds, we would be able to help approximately 77 households. Um, so, you know, that would help go toward um, covering their cost and, and how they are overburdened, um, you know, with uh, rent and utility payments, um, you know, may have uh, loss of jobs or other challenges re related to the pandemic. I'll go through right now um, some of the strategies that have been outlined in the um, in the uh, the con plan. Number one being the housing strategy. Um, as you're aware. Um, housing affordability and the available, uh, availability of uh, housing units within the city of New Bern uh, remains a constant challenge. Uh, that, of course, was exasperated by Hurricane Florence two years ago. Um, so home ownership, housing construction are two needs identified, as well as housing rehabilitation and fair housing activities. Um, that's a number one priority that we hear in um, all of our listening sessions with the community. Um, from residents, from our outreach to other um, organizations and agencies uh, throughout the area. A homelessness strategy um, to improve living conditions and basically protect against um, homelessness and or homeless persons that um, have different challenges within our community. So to provide better housing, to provide operations and support in the community, homeless prevention and rapid rehousing whenever possible. 
Uh, special needs strategy um, would be helping people that may have special needs to identify um, uh, proactive housing solutions for them, um, as well as social services um, to provide programs either uh, through the city of New Bern or through other agencies that can offer that support. Um, and then accessibility in certain situations, we can improve access um, to um, housing or, or rental houses as well. Community development strategy, um, so this includes things like infrastructure, community facilities, uh, public services, public transit, uh, clearance um, to remove slum and blight, um, as well as uh, removing our, you know, architectural barriers or improving overall public safety, uh, which you can um, know from the Duffyfield Stormwater Project, that is a community development uh, project as well. Um, I went through that relatively quickly. If anyone has questions, I can answer those now, or you're, you're welcome to hear from the public. Okay, um, when you said that um, agencies will handle the uh, monies for the rent and utilities, how many agencies are you looking at to handle that, one or two? It will be one agency, um, and we have identified Religious Community Services, RCS, here in our community. They already operate a uh, rent and utility assistance program, uh, so they have the capacity to be able to provide um, to provide those services to the community. So that's where, that's where the individuals will go to apply? Yes. We will basically give it to RCS as a subrecipient. Through a subrecipient uh, agreement, it will outline the criteria to meet um, all the HUD eligibility um, criteria that we have to uh, cover, and then our staff will monitor um, to ensure you know quality of the program execution. Very good. Thank you. When, when oh. will that become effective? Oh, um, I apologize. When would that when would that be available? At, at is it when you actually get the funds? Yes, so basically we know that we will receive those funds, the annual action process um, and the public hearing process. Once the Board of Aldermen would approve that final plan, which is approved to be on your next board agenda, uh, per HUD's uh, guidelines, uh, we cannot um, hold a public hearing and vote on the, the plan in the same public meeting. So that will come before you next time. Uh, then we will submit that plan to HUD for review and approval, and that will basically release the funds to us to do these programs. So end of September, we'll submit the, the plan. Um, they've been pretty quick to get back to us, so probably within uh, mid-October, I would expect that we'd have the funds. Okay. Um, uh, Amanda, before the funding was handled for the housing rehabilitation was handled through your department, so now those funds will be handled under the redevelopment commission for the portion of housing rehabilitation? Yes, we are proposing to bring new um, rental, housing, rental housing online, so um, it will not um, be rehabilitation. In the past, we did a, a small or minor rehab mm -hmm. program that went to individual homeowners. This will be a larger scale program to bring on additional rental units, so to bring on an additional rental unit in the community that did not exist previously. So you're telling me that if I have a, a homeowner in my in Ward 5, which is the Duffyfield, portion of Duffyfield, those funds are not available to aid that, that citizen anymore for just some rehabilitation to maybe repair a roof or something like that? Is that what you're right. saying? Right. We, we have suspended that program, so we are no longer doing the, the minor rehabilitation program in this annual action plan. Okay. Any other questions? So, um, in your goals that you listed, mm -hmm. you had several <clears throat> goals. One of them, of course, was transportation, which is of great need in the community. But we have no dollars planned for that. Is correct? Do you, you, do you list the goals even though you're not taking any of the money to go towards that? Is that Co correct? Correct. I just tried to give a upper larger scale review of our five year annual uh, or our con consolidated planning process, which identified numerous community needs and then each one of these activities, some of them, you know, uh, accomplished strategies within those, in, within various priorities. 
um, but it may not, an annual action plan may not cover all of those goals. Okay, because of the funding. Right, because of the availability so you, you of funding. Leave it in there just in case additional funding is available, then you can come back and correct. go back to your plan. You don't have to amend the plan. Right, correct. So the five-year document kind of lists all community needs um, based on you know our research, based on the data we review, and then the annual action plan kind of drills down into some specific uh, deliverables and outcomes that we can then measure and report back to HUD as accomplishments. Okay. Um, one final comment question. I want to delve a little bit more into what um, Alderman Best was asking you because I'm, I, I think I hear her. Um, in the past, I think I understood that not very many people accessed the funds for repair because it, the guidelines were very stringent. Is that correct? I mean, it was difficult to use the money. Has, has that been the case, or why would you abandon a program that may have been successful? Is that correct, Alderman Best? Am I asking? I think um, that's what I hear. Yes, yeah. you, you go ahead with that because I got more to come. Okay. <laughs> um, so, our minor housing repair program was for homeowners within the city of New Bern, so they had to be owner occupied homes. It provided basically up to $10,000 for rehab of the property. Um, we did have um, numerous properties that, that we have rehabbed. Um, there are certain challenges related to the federal standards um, to bring homes up to minimum housing compliance, and oftentimes that $10,000 was not necessarily enough funds to cover the amount of work um, that was needed in an individual home. Um, there were also some other eligibility uh, criteria that, that sometimes could not be met or environmental review uh, processes that had to occur for a home to uh, you know, be in compliance that we could spend those funds. So um, there were multiple layers that that individual home uh, would have to qualify for. And then, um, of course, uh, Hurricane Florence happened. And there was certainly, you know, amount of damages that, that oftentimes might have been related to hurricane damage or exasperated problems, uh, you know, within a home. So the availability of funds um, of what we were allowed to spend on each individual home did not necessarily cover the need, um, you know, for uh, those properties. So by going to a program where you're going to fund rental homes is that are you finding there's you have more need in the rental market than you do in the home homeowner occupied yeah the study in the five-year con plan definitely said that we um, wanted to, needed to increase the um, the availability of rental homes that were affordable safe energy efficient um, and that was a program that we had not taken on yet. So this is our foray into that um, into that category. Thank you. So, so you're you're telling me that you're looking at a rental property that is owned by a landlord, correct? Is yes. that what you're saying? Um, it would be a property that would be a rental unit that would be um, owned and rented by the Redevelopment Commission to. Uh, low-income individuals so um, still the criteria there that um, you know in perpetuity or um, in, in the time frame you know HUD requires which is I think is 20 years um, will have to be rented to low-income individuals okay maybe I'm missing something are you saying that you're speaking of rental property that it will be owned by the Redevelopment Commission yes. not a landlord involved Correct. Okay. No, it'll be right. owned right. by the Redevelopment right. Commission, and then it will be rented to, um, you know, an individual that is low income in our community. I'm, I'm still having a problem with this plan because, you know, in the past, we got a lot of senior citizens that live on fixed income and are not able to fix their homes. And just to knock that portion out of this plan, I, I just, I'm not comfortable with that. Because I, I have so many elderly people that need some assistance, and there's no way that y'all can work around this through, you know, the HUD guidelines or whatever. Or is this a program simply that you, the, that Development Services and the Redevelopment Commission has come up with? Uh, it's been you know we've had multiple meetings with different agencies we've okay. listened to our citizens um we've worked um 
uh, with our advisory board, our community development advisory board to help identify, um, you know, what the needs are. Um, there are other programs that, that other organizations and agencies are doing, especially in the, the realm of recovery um, and helping, you know, individuals age in place. Um, you know, and at this particular time, uh, we elected to remove that from the draft plan. Um, you know, it, it, again, is a draft plan. So, you know, that's why we're having these meetings is to listen to your feedback and the feedback of our community and, you know, determine if there are any changes that need to be made. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Does, does this um, program affect, uh, like, commercial, like if I owned um, a building and maybe to do like um you know fix my roof am i still able to go to the city and say hey can you work with me on this uh this particular plan does not um, really address the economic development strategy that would be uh commercial properties or removing bright blight uh, the city of new Bern, uh does have a facade grant program that is separate and not funded by cdbg funds okay um amanda could you maybe share with us um historically how that program that Alderman Bess is speaking of has gone because I thought I remember in the years past hearing that we ended up with money left over that we couldn't spend because they couldn't meet the criteria yes. so maybe if we could put it in yes yeah, so um, you know oftentimes we did have a wait list of individuals that wanted um, to um, apply for our housing rehab our minor housing rehab program um, unfortunately, what we found is there was a lot of attrition with that program, um, meaning that we may have had, um, you know, a list of 10 homes that we identified and would be funded under the budget. However, through, um, you know, title work and there is a deed restriction, it basically is a forgivable loan or grant. Um, oftentimes, we would end up only having four homes um, that we would be able to proceed with once we went through the environmental review process, once we could get a clean title on the property. Um, there were a lot of challenges with that, and then you all will remember we are currently um, dealing with um, a timeliness issue where, um, especially with Hurricane Florence and not being able to carry out those uh, program year activities, um, HUD requires that at um, 60 days prior to the end of the, the year, the end of the fiscal year, they do a timeliness test, which basically means that we can only have one and a half times um, our annual allocation in our bank or in our line of credit. Um, so the city of New Bern had exceeded that. So we are right now in um, basically um, a, a process where we report to HUD monthly what our accomplishments are to draw down funds. Um, and through our con plan and through our outreach in the community, we are trying to accomplish larger scale projects uh, that can have um, kind of a greater impact across many individuals within the community uh, versus, um, you know, one, one house at a time, which was a great program. It just was really challenging for us to carry out in such a short period of time just due to so many um, unknown factors that we couldn't control at the staff level. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? At this time, I'm going to open a public hearing. Anybody from the public that would like to come up and ask any questions, make any comments about the sign, you're free to do that at this time. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we close the public hearing. Second. Motion and second. Is there discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. All opposed the same. What other action do we need to take on this at this time, Mr. Stevens? That's it. Anything else, okay? That's it for now. We'll uh, bring this back to you at the next okay. board meeting for adoption. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you. Let's go to item number eight. Thank you, Mayor. Item number eight is uh, consideration of the board to adopt a resolution to close specific streets uh, for a revisioned Mum Fest, which is going to be called Mum Feast 2020. Um, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, Mum Fest has been safely reimagined and renamed as Mum Feast. Uh, tonight we have with us Lynn Herrickle. I think she wants to come up and say a few words. I know she came here tonight. Uh, but ultimately, um, Swiss Bear is, is asking the city uh, to use the Talbot's lot at 304 and 308 South Front Street 
and to block off uh, five parking spaces adjacent to that lot on each Friday and Saturday in October. Additionally, they're requesting that uh, uh, the two and 300 blocks of Middle Street, the three and 400 blocks of Pollock Street, and the 200 block of Craven Street be closed each of those days uh, from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Um, on the Friday and Saturdays in October. Uh, so uh, there's a memo that's been included in your packet from Mr. Hughes. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to Lynn. Um, I'm sure she can give you more details about the reimagined Mum Feast. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Um, so Mum Fest, obviously, due to the pandemic, cannot go on as, as planned or scheduled in any kind of safe manner. Um, our downtown businesses, though, do um, require to be propped up um, moving forward, and they have, in the, they have since the pandemic has begun. Um, what we have done over the course of the last few months, as everybody here already knows, is we have had a street closure on Friday evening from 5 o'clock until 11 o'clock, and we've done the same on Saturday evening. So what we, will be, what we are proposing to do for Mum Feast is an extension of that so that it goes through the day on Saturday, gives the restaurants an opportunity to serve two additional meals on the street, gives them more capacity, um, which allows them to, um, to make more money, which they're in desperate need of. We're going to also be um, having the, the retail establishments downtown have their goods be placed out onto the sidewalk. If it is possible for them to uh, put a booth on the street, that is also fine. We are bringing in a minimum number of vendors, and I can't stress that enough. Be about a half a dozen vendors that will be in place on each of the weekends in October, because this is a five weekend event. Um, they will just simply be positioned with a lot of spacing in between each vendor in order to, to bridge the uh, retail gaps that exist in our downtown. Uh, very often people don't go beyond a certain point. This will help move people into the direction of additional retail and different additional um, uh, restaurants as well. They're on the tablet lot, as what was mentioned by the city manager earlier. Um, we will be having about five uh, food vendors that are traditional Mumfest food vendors. Uh, they, again, we've measured everything out. They can be very nicely spaced apart from one another. Uh, so there's plenty of space for people to be able to queue up, to be able to place their orders. And in addition to that, on South Front Street, we will block off um, all of the parking spaces that, uh, that, that flank the Talbot lot so that we can do curbside pickup. So I don't know if you have any questions about how this is going to be handled, but I'll be happy to answer any questions I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Um, how is uh, the CDC going to work if um, we're only in 2.5 in regards to um, only having about 50 people congregated outside? We're moving. The way this is not any different really than it's really not any different than it is for Friday and Saturday evenings. And the governor permits to have on street dining, so this falls within those guidelines. Okay. Other questions? Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt the resolution to close specific streets for Mum Feast 2020. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Bess? Yes. Alderman Adam? Yes. Okay. Okay, thank yes. you. Thank you for all you're doing. Let's go to number nine. Um, did the board want to, you ready for the presentation or did you? Um, Mayor, I, I know I've discussed this earlier with you today with the city manager um, and I'd like for the Board of Aldermen maybe to take a minute to see if we would delay discussion of the radio project until our work session in October when we could have a full workup. You know, we talked about this earlier and I'm still, um, not 100% with the information I've received. I'm trying to do a little more research. So uh, we had asked the city manager to have our work, a work session in October to go over finances. Um, so again, I've mentioned this to the mayor and asked him about that. Um, I certainly would 
you know, whatever the board wishes. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Mark, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is, this is basically a software upgrade, upgrade correct? Yeah, um, I know Chief's here. Uh, he's, Chief? ready. He, he's, he's here to answer any kind of questions the board may have uh, with regards to it. But, but yes, um, essentially we have, um, if I relate it to everyday usage, this is similar to like if I was running Microsoft XP and Microsoft says we're no longer going to support Microsoft XP. So you need to upgrade to, you know, Windows 2020, okay? Well, if that's the case, then there, if your computer breaks during this or your programs break during this XP version of unsupported um, software, then you're pretty much on your own. Um, so this upgrade essentially brings our system upgraded and up to date with where we need to be for the, the existing software. Chief, let me ask you a question. When will they, it's my understanding that they will eventually stop supporting our radio system software, correct? Yeah, that has already occurred, yes sir. So they are no, there's no longer support? Correct. So are we required under any mandate to do this upgrade? And if so, when is it effective? Uh, I wouldn't say we require the, any of, of, under any mandate, but obviously if our system <laughs> fails, then we have no radio system. Uh, and. Yeah. Yes. And, and the reason why this is coming up now is because originally you were under the impression that the 911 funds would pay for it in whole, correct? Yes. The solution that, uh, that our vendor first came up with was a sympathy uh, solution, which was a, at the cost of $225,000. We petitioned the 911 board, and they had agreed to pay that amount for that. We set into motion to go ahead and, and proceed in that manner, and once we got to that point, then all of a sudden the vendor said, time out, time out, that solution will no longer work, that we needed a major uplift. So we no longer have any support for our radio system? Uh, not, not total support, no, sir. Hmm. As far as the software goes and certain parts of the tower. And, uh, certain and how long will it take you, if we were to, say, do it tonight, how long will it take you to get the upgrades in place? Uh, the, the timeline that we had uh, in place should it be approved tonight would be to start somewhere around December and would take until the end of June. And, and I'm, I'm assuming this will affect the police department, fire department, and, and the entire city yes. forces, correct? Correct. Yeah. I think it's critical that we move on this. We knew it was coming. The, the issue was is that we thought that the 911 funds would be there to pay for it. How much is it going to cost us, Mark? Million. Chief, is Viper about? I mean, how? What, I mean, God forbid, if it went down tomorrow, is there is there a backup? Do you use Viper? Do you go to the county system? Or what what is the? What would you do? In an Viper, Viper is an auxiliary part of our radio system that okay. we can go to. However, we have to have a Viper base station if we're going to go totally to move to a Viper system. And a Viper system is more, is more of a repeater type system. I'm not talking about going to system, but would that be a backup? So you would, no, you would not have a community, no, you'd have zero communication if it went down. We can communicate to the sheriff's office. It would not be an effective system for the city, no. Temporarily. And it's in my understanding, is Viper radios aren't very effective in, I, I know, especially in the fire service. Is that correct, Chief Boyd? Are they, they don't have penetration, correct? Okay. I'm not a proponent of that. I was just asking. Yeah, there, there's, there's just no, there's no penetration there. Um, I, I have to piggyback along with you on Alderman um, Astor. I think this is something that we don't need to prolong. We need to go ahead and move forward with this, especially if it's going to create a, a, a hazard or a problem for our yeah. first responders. And it, it won't take but one lightning strike exactly. or something like that. I would think. How are we going to pay for it, Mark? Um, well, that's what the next items are for. So <laughs> if you decide not to do this item, you don't need to do 10 and 11 because those are tied associated with financing. So it, the, the intent is for them to be financed. Any, you know, um, of course I was involved in the first buying of a new system. And when we bought the new system, it was the end all be all and we needed to buy it and we spent yeah. a lot of money to get it. Yeah. How many years ago was that? 10. Um, but I know you came in shortly after that, and that is probably not the system you would have bought for 
for potentially what you're doing. Is there, you know, do we have a concern that with a new chief coming in the first of the year, would they want something different than this, and then we're going to spend the money all over again? I'm just making sure that we if, have. If I could speak on that, whether that was the system I would have purchased or not, it, it would still have to be upgraded up to so many years. Uh, under, still be in the I, I understand that, but are we going to spend a million two now and then spend another potentially $5 million if a different system? Well, we have the control. Thing? Yeah, that's <laughs> I mean, I'm if we upgrade the system. Look, I'm being the devil's advocate here. I'm asking all the questions. Chief, I'm going to have you I'm going to answer on. that question, Alderman Bingle, because <laughs> if we spend a million two to upgrade that system now, unless there is an absolute catastrophic failure or the board directs me to do so otherwise, I won't be bringing another five or six million dollar radio system to the board. So will we get another Chief? 10 years out of this? That was my question. How long will this? I think it was eight, six to eight. Well, eight years, basically what they said, eight. Oh, uh, I, I do, Mayor. Um, Chief, could you explain to us, was it the vendor that originally said we for $250,000 we could upgrade and then the vendor changed midstream and said that won't work anymore? Yes. And what, what was their reason or justification behind that? They said that the Harris um, folks would not support the upgrade solution that they came up with. So that the sim sympathy uh, um, component was no longer an answer to what we needed. So I know we're always beholden to the vendor and technology and it's ever evolving, but my concern is, is that we're partnering with a vendor who gave us an alternative and then had a change because of hardware or the, the manufacturer of the actual you know, equipment itself. But my question is, are we, are we making a rash decision tonight because we've got to do this because we feel like we're under the gun when in reality the best alternative might be to spend three, four, five million dollars and, and stretch that out if that gives us better capability and it's a better investment for the future. That's my only concern. I don't like making rash decisions and it may be a situation if we're going to finance this anyway. If you finance a brand new system, do you finance it longer and could the price be the same? I mean, at annual cost to the city? I don't know, but I'm just saying, have we gone through, can you assure me that staff has gone through all those different processes to make sure this is the best decision? Yes, we have. We've been looking at this approximately a year and a half to almost two years. And if you go to a new system again, eight years down the road, you'll be at the same point that you are today that you'll have to upgrade the system with technology. The, the last thing that I would say is I, I think this is one of those situations where with technology and IT going forward, we should have some sort of allocation or uh, a capital. Maybe is, is this in our capital improvement plan, Mr. Stevens, so we know each year that we need to be setting funding aside? Yeah, it's in the police capital improvement plan typically each year. I mean, our finance department, uh, they, they usually request of the department heads uh, a five-year capital plan at, at, in advance. And that's reviewed and kind of gives her a forecast of, of what kind of financing we're going to be doing or looking at in the future. So that's all included as part of stuff that department heads submit to the budget team. If the board wishes to see all those documents, we can certainly provide those. But it helps us, it helps us provide a, budget, a, a balanced budget to the board um, and helps us make decisions internally about which capital projects we're approving and which ones we're not. My, my last comment, I'll just say that, you know, if you come to us and you ask for, you know, a $100,000 air conditioning system that, that went out in a, a building, obviously we know we've got to do that. This is a substantial investment, and I think this would have been one that some of that additional information could have been provided that would have helped put us a little bit more at ease versus, hey, we need to make this decision or we're going to lose our capability to communicate. So I appreciate yeah, it. How, why did it come about like that? I mean, why, why all of a sudden, I reckon is the question, uh, is it because the 911 money was going to pay for it? We were just going to move forward with getting the upgrades? Yes, we had moved. We, we again, we had a plan set in motion that the 225,000 of simply component would have solved that problem. And it wasn't until we got to the point, I think it was in May, that we actually implemented it. And, and I think I forwarded the letter to city manager that we got a letter from the uh, our vendor saying that that no longer was a viable, uh, viable solution. I have a question. Uh, no, no, I'm not, can, if you don't mind, for yes, sir. Uh, we knew later on down the road we would still have to do some of the other additions that we had discussed with the city manager, and he had he had supported us in going with the immediate solution, and we were going to address the other issues later on. 
So can we, I'm Johnny, I'm sorry, can we still use the 911 funds to pay for a portion of this yes, upgrade? The $225,000 will still be used. Okay. So but it would have been 14, so, 1.4 or something. Is that annually? No. No. This is a one time cost. 1.2 is a one time cost. I'm talking about with the 911 funds. Can we use them annually to pay, help pay for this? They will continue to support this, the system. But we will no longer have to do this uplift again. So it won't be an huh. annual uplift. I understand. I think what you're saying, can you apply the, if we get 225000 in funds a year from 911, can we apply them towards the debt service? No, this 225 is just for that particular component. Oh, one time. Directly with 911. So it's a one time payment? Yes. Chief, does that, I don't know if y'all know this is not what I was out for a minute. <laughs> but what, wasn't there going to be a reduction in the maintenance fee when this upgraded? Yes, I think it's gone from 250 down to 140 the first year, so and, then, was, and then it'll be a gradual, gradual no, increase didn't. every three years. I mean, every, excuse me, a three percent increase every year. Yeah, but, <laughs> well, I want to make sure that was indexed at a reasonable rate, but we were going to save some money yes. uh, on the maintenance. Yes, sir. This is a very serious topic. Why wasn't this brought to the retreat? If we knew that this was going to happen so suddenly, you know. Again, this was a item we were going to handle internally with a $225,000 expense that was going to be paid for and had been identified by our staff as well as the vendor to be paid for through the 911 funds. It wasn't until May, three months after or almost four months after, I guess, three, four months after our retreat, did we find out that this is not going to be enough. You've got to do all this other upgrade, which now costs us $1.4 million versus $225,000 or $250,000. So we, we had no idea it was going to be one point two. We were trying to address it internally so that it would be taken care of through the 911 funds and the board wouldn't have to worry about it. So actually what you're saying, you didn't have a backup plan. So right now, you're expecting us to come up with the money to do something that we need to do. I'm just trying to get an understanding here. That's a whole lot of money that on a situation that is desperately needed, but yet, you know, all of a sudden it wasn't a backup plan to say, well, if that don't happen, we can do this here. Uh, this I is hope there's not a backup there's not a backup. If you don't get the soft, if you don't get the software upgrade, you're you're dead in the water. He just said that they have a plan, that they plan to do things to have that on the plan. What was it you just asked just now, Alderman uh, 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 Let me let me ask this question. Um, knowing that there was going to have to be an upgrade down the road, and you've got a five-year capital improvement plan. Has some of this funding of this 1.2 that we're being asked for in staff's back, back room discussions and conversations, you guys were eventually preparing to make this investment. It's just happening a little bit sooner. Is that Correct. fair? We, we thought that simply the project would be a Band-Aid that lasts us, buy us a few more years, and then we was going to implement it in our capital improvement plan. Yes, sir. Okay. Wasn't it 2025? Was, what, or I think 2020? it was more like 2023. Okay. Somewhere right in there was kind of the, the plan. So. I mean, this this is this is kind of a, a, a when, when we find out that this is no longer supported, it goes with this component, and everything else is along with it. So you might as well do it now versus wait until 2023 whenever you're doing that upgrade. But so it wasn't important for us to to to, to, to think about that, to include that, to share it to us. Instead of just bringing it to us all, to us all of a sudden to say we got to do this. That's all I'm saying. So how much more discussion do we need, Mr. Mayor? Well, the only, the only discussion that uh, my opinion on the whole matter is that I, I think as I, I said earlier and the last time this got brought up, there aren't a lot of other options. It, it, we either upgrade, and the only other option is to purchase another system. And I don't think you're going to purchase another system for 1.2 or 1.5 million dollars. I think I think the the next system you get is going to be a lot more money than that. Plus the 
training and everything else that will go with it. Um, I did support all the Bengals, uh, our discussion about the, I, I don't want to personally wait till the last part of October, the earlier part of October, I, I wanted to get a, uh, a finance retreat of sorts. Uh, we, we did discuss six months ago we were going to do that in October. And I would like to, you know, to really uh, fine tune the numbers because uh, this is quite an expenditure. There are two items on that that we we want to approve, and I think we do want to make uh, decisions on both of them. But um, uh, I just I simply don't know. It, it's no different than in anybody's business in this room. You you have to upgrade your software. I bike the board every year and do it, and and don't like having to do it. But I don't really have a lot of alternatives. Uh, you know, I think the city. We tested doing some virtual reality softwares years ago, and, and I thought maybe that's the way systems were going to go, and particularly in the communication end of it, but that's not come to pass. So um, I think we are where we are. It's just a matter of when we want to make the decision. I personally would like to do it in the October finance retreat because there's quite a few other things, and part of that was we did not know as a city where we were going to be with the COVID, um, where we were going to get... Um, relief funds and um, while other cities are furloughing and having layoffs and things like that, I think we're in a pretty good position. But again, um, I, I personally would like to wait till October. So How much would it cost us annually, Mark? You know what the financing payment is? And that'll be for both of these projects, not yeah. just one. Well, no, for this, for just for this project alone, 1.2 million annually over eight years, we're looking at $150,000 a year plus some interest. Um, I don't have it broken down individually, but um, that'll be on the next agenda item. Is looking at that. We have we have uh, put these both of these projects. We put three different financing uh, projects out to bid and have are coming to you tonight with recommendations for all three. So, but we can hold this off until December and do it then. I mean, until October, if that's and, what you choose. And Mary, to do. what are we saving per year in <laughs> operational maintenance fees for the software? Yeah, yeah. Uh, about I thought it was about seventy, but you just said one hundred and ten. So I'll need to double check. I haven't looked at it for a couple months, but I thought. Okay, about okay. so so he, yeah, so he said it's one hundred and ten. I had in my mind seventy, but it's 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 Is that annually, Chief? Yes, the first year was a three percent increase right. every year after. So give us the breakdown of uh, enterprise funds and everything else, how this shakes out as far as the expense of this, it popped up for 1.2 million. Do you know, Mary, what the breakdown I, I, is? At this point, at, at this point we're, we're looking at funding it primarily through the general fund. I have not, looked, I have not broken it down. There, I, there's going to be some breakdown that the, would go, obviously, to the other funds, but it's very minimal because you got minimal users in public works, parks and rec, and water utilities uh, and electric utilities. The majority of the expense and the use is probably going to be fire it's going to be based on a call of service or usage and that's all going to be police and fire primarily. We looked just briefly there's a, a few uh, a few radios that that, uh, that Charlie's group uses but it's it's at the end of the day it's minimal. Well I, I mean I've resigned myself from the research I've done that this city is going to spend for 30 square miles, it's going to spend $150,000 a year on communications for our first responders is what we're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just a matter from the decision-making process of uh, are there any <coughs> alternative communication systems that are any any better than this one? I'm not an expert at it. I assume there could be, but I don't know that the cost benefit of uh, a, a totally a new system. That's the only other thing you got. Well, to yeah. I too was involved heavily in the purchase of this radio system that we currently have. And you're talking about something that can take 18, 24 months to research, go on bids, and probably even longer than that and getting the, the, the equipment in place and the radios in and everything else. I mean, it's, it's, down, it's, it's nothing that you're going to do overnight. I, the issue I have is, is that we've got a system here that's unsupported. Now, whether we should have known about it earlier or not, that's a different story. But it's unsupported, and if a police officer is in need and the radio system goes down, or if there's a firefighter inside of a burning structure and their system goes down, 
or the poor electrician or the electrical worker is on a utility pole and, and trying to make sure whatever electricians do up on top of utility poles and the system goes down, it's, it's different than if, and no disrespect for developed services, but it's different than if a de development service person wanted to call in and say, did so-and-so get a permit? So as soon as we get to item number 10, I'm going to make the motion that we go forward with the upgrade. It's, it's got to be done, and the longer we wait, the chances are that we'll have a failure. We won't have a fix for it. We're going to be dead in the water, and it could jeopardize some of our employees. And that's the last thing I want to do. Um, question as far as the quotes that we've got for the bank, when do they expire? How good is that interest rate good through? I got 30 days. 30 days from now? Mm -hmm. So, and then you have to get LGC approval and they meet monthly, or is that a monthly process? Yeah. yeah. So just hypothetically, if we were to delay this to October when we have a work session, it's then gonna be November before you get LGC approval. Our interest rate quote would be expired. It will be that makes sense. November after November. Who knows what the interest rate's gonna be? Yeah. So, okay. I will, uh, okay. I can get them renewed at, at any time, but that's, that's where we're at right now. That's, okay. that's the Thank reality you. of it. Yes, okay. it is. So let's go to item 10. <laughs> so no action on What are we going to do? Do we need action on this no, item? Number nine. Number nine, don't well, we need action? It's just a discussion, and it essentially was leading up to 10 and 11. If the board has any more questions, we'll be happy to answer. Okay. What about the, um, is, there, is there discussions? I reckon we'll discuss item 10, Pleasant Hill Community Building. Are, are y'all technically exhausted on item nine? Uh -huh. If you're not. Are we through with item number nine? Yes, sir. Yes. Let's, let's, uh, let's, um, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, Alderman and Bingo asked to set aside the discussion for number nine, but we have discussions. That's correct. Okay, so, I mean, are we going to be able to satisfy number 10 if um, we didn't really have a deep discussion on what was going on? I think we did have a discussion because her motion wasn't seconded. I didn't make a motion. Or no motion, so. <laughs> I didn't make a motion. I'm satisfied with the discussion that we had. I am too. Okay, uh, let's go to item number 10. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 10 is uh, resolution approving the submission of an application to the Local Government Commission for financing of a radio project upgrade and the Pleasant Hill Community Building. Um, to proceed with the radio system upgrade that we just discussed and the Pleasant Hill Community Center building which was in the budget. Uh, authorization is needed to file an application with the Local Government Commission for approval of financing because we intend to use debt service to, to purchase both of these. Uh, once the application is submitted, it is anticipated the LGC will consider approval at their November 3rd meeting. Uh, the combined financing for both projects is estimated not to exceed $1,803,895. After receiving the LGC approval, the city will need to hold a public hearing on the financing. Uh, there's amendments included in your packet from Ms. Hogan. She can answer any questions you may have. Well, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt a resolution approving the submission of an application to the Local Government Commission for financing of a radio project upgrade and the Pleasant Hill Community Building. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on item number 10. Is there a discussion? Or have any questions, any comments? I think we did a pretty good job on item number nine doing that. So, just uh, a yes. question on the um, the three hundred thousand for the building. I know that was in our budget. Is that um, what what is that three hundred thousand dollars going to get us? Is it a, a shell building? Is it going to have a kitchen? Is it storage? Who's going to manage it? Is it going to be leased out like our other facilities are within Parks and Rec? Just some detail. Behind. Foster's got some vision on that. I'll give him to get some detail. Yes, sir. So that will be a, a, a metal structure building. Staff will be working on the interior of it. Most likely it will be a wide open building with, with a catering kitchen in there with some storage space as well. Uh, it will be managed by Parks and Recreation. It will be available for, for rentals, for parties, receptions, and things like that. Uh, activities will also be held in the facility as well. Can that be used for a shelter with cots 
for staff in the case of emergency? <coughs> it could be. For staff. Yeah. Any other questions? So I have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Motion carries. I'm number 11. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 11 is a resolution approving the financing of a radio project upgrade and the Pleasant Hill Community Building. Um, proposals were sought from three banks for the financing of the radio project upgrade and construction of the Pleasant Hill Community Center building. As mentioned above, the total loan amount will not exceed $1,803,895. BB&T was the only bank that responded, offered a 10-year loan uh, with a fixed interest rate at 1.75%. Happy to answer any questions. Well, my only question is, that, that's just, why, why are none of the banks interested? I mean, a lot of times we have five, six, seven banks interested in something. Um, did, 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 did we <laughs> need to be a little more zealous in our attempt to get somebody to bid on this thing, or? I tried. Um, I, I will tell you, um, I, I talked to our the local bank that we do most of our banking through right over here, and uh, they don't offer any, they're not currently offering any uh, f financing for these type of activities for governments for more than five years. So we had a f we had three different items. The, the next item on here is the fire truck. So they would not offer a bid. They did offer a bid on another item you'll see tonight on the uh, the vehicles, which was a 59 month loan, mm -hmm. and they offered a bid on that one. Um, I talked to PNC. PNC said they are not going to they are not going to be competitive. At all they said we're not going to bother with a bid because we can't come anywhere close. He said I know the numbers you're going to get are going to be you know 1.1, 1.5, We're not going to get anywhere close to two. Um, <laughs> and then I got one from Wells Fargo, and they were basically the same. They said we're not going to we're not going to waste our time because we can't come close to that. We're not going to give it below two. So I had two verbally tell me they weren't going to bother because they knew they couldn't compete. And then the other one. Who did give us a second bid on the five year, the 59 month uh, items? Um, they they came in, but they were actually higher. So BB and T actually was the only one who bid on the 10 year and then the 15 year loan for the for the fire trucks as well. Um, I tried four. If there's other ones you'd like me to go, I'm probably going to need to go back to these guys anyway and extend the deadline. Um, so I, I can I'm going to ask BB and T to extend it past 30 days. But I can also, if you've got some other suggestion. Have at it. <laughs> They're not interested right now in uh, in loans. Thank you. They probably had their fill with the PPP loan process, I'm sure. Well, and then, uh, interest rates are low. They're not making any money off us. So. Right. That is, you know. Is there any more discussion on this that we need? If not, I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution approving the financing of a radio project upgrade in the Pleasant Hill Community Building. Second. Motion and second. Is there any discussion? See, seeing others have a roll call starting with Alderman Bingo. Alderman Bingo? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Bess? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries. Item number 12. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 12 is resolution approving the financing of fire apparatus. Um, the 2019-20 budget approved the purchase of two different fire apparatuses, uh, a Southern pumper and a Southern aerial platform. Uh, proposals were sought from three different banks for the financing of the fire trucks for an amount not to exceed $1,720,621. Again, bb and was the only bank that responded. The proposed term of the loan is 15 years with a fixed interest rate of 2.060%. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Board have questions. Yep. Um, uh, uh, Alderman Astor, former fire chief, Go you might me. give us some updates. Buy some fire trucks. <laughs> you might give us an update on the trucks. Did we? Uh, actually, we just took delivery today. Correct, Chief Boyd. It came in tomorrow the seventeenth. We took delivery of it. it. It arrived today, and you're going to be running the acceptance test tomorrow. Correct. And is this on the platform? Yes, sir. All right. Good. Um, the mayor, I would like to make a motion that we adopt a resolution approving the financing of fire apparatus. Second. Motion and second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. 
Alderman Bess? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Motion carries item number 13. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 13 is a resolution approving the financing of 2021 capital purchases. Uh, the current year's budget approves certain capital equipment and vehicle purchases. Financing proposals were sought from three different banks. BBNT was the only one to respond. The per, uh, proposed term uh, for $1,210,673 loan is 59 months with a fixed interest rate of 1.19% interest. Uh, happy to answer any questions you may have. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Is there discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Betts? Yes. Alderman Adam? <coughs> yes. Motion carries item number 14. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, item number 14 is a budget ordinance amendment for the Coronavirus Relief Funds, Session Law 2020-4 appropriated funding for the coronavirus relief fund as issued by the North Carolina Pandemic Recovery Office. Of the funds designated for Craven County, the county allotted $497,477 to the City of Newburn for expenses that support the county's uh, CRF plan, uh, which is the coronavirus relief funds plan. Uh, this budget amendment will acknowledge and appropriate this funding for various medical, public health, safety, and compliance costs associated with COVID-19. Uh, we're happy to answer any questions regarding this plan um, that you may have. Ms. Hogan's outlined that in her memo. Board have questions. No, I just want to make a comment. You know, I've been, con I don't know if anyone else, but I've been contacted by a couple of nonprofits and actually had a request submitted um, asking for some of these funds to be dispersed to, to some nonprofits. Um, and uh, I would like just for the city manager to address that and that all these funds are going to be spent uh, doing things within the city or that the city needs to upgrade and do um, because of COVID as well as um, it would be difficult, I think, at best, how, how do we pick and choose? I would hate to have to yeah. be a group that would have to pick and choose who got what. Yeah, I think that's some of the, the difficulties, uh, uh, Alderman Bingle, is, is, you know, picking and choosing in between which nonprofits get it and which don't because I'm sure they all, all been impacted just as much as businesses with right. restaurants and, and, and retail shops and everything else has. Um, the, the issues that we see is the, the, the government's response that we have as far as our plan, uh, both what has already occurred, what is occurring, occurring now, and the future uh, for this remainder of the calendar year of what we, or actually our fiscal year, what we've got to do uh, in order to maintain our, our uh, coronavirus uh, response. Um, we still have staff time that's being allocated towards the COVID-19. Um, HR is consistently putting time on timesheets that goes towards this. We also have some capital improvements that we need to do uh, and improvements to our facilities to meet the needs uh, for the COVID social distancing and, and separation of people so that we can still continue to provide services that we maintain as a city. So hopefully that answers some of those questions that we do have a plan. Uh, Mary had reached out to the department heads, what, a month, month and a half ago, uh, asking them for details about what each department needed to be spending uh, on COVID and what they have already spent. So that's a lot of the things that we're taking into account. Um, even to the point all the way down to the warehouse of buying our masks back initially when everything started, we kind of started accounting for all of that. It's just, is that a public document somewhere that if a citizen wanted to know how we spent that money, is that? I think uh, it's outlined in the plan, actually. It is in the um, plan. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Just so I can direct something. And it was required of us to submit both <laughs> what we what we had determined as our existing costs versus what our um, our expected potential costs will be for the COVID, and that was our submission to the county because the county <coughs> has to review compliance of that plan in order for us to get the allocation of $497,000. Okay, Russell. thank you very much. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, so these were the funds that um, I had talked about before in regards to talking about how they were gonna be utilized. Um, so some of the information states that the money could go towards um, helping residents with outstanding utility bills or provide internet access, food distribution, COVID-19 testing, 
Is there any specific reason why we haven't sat down and have a conversation on a way where we can actually directly impact the community with these funds? Um, I mean, we we will we can work at whatever the board's direction that they want us to do. We're we're, we're bringing the plan before the board tonight for uh, your your review and approval, uh, so that we can get the funding from um, the county. Um, ultimately, the plan can be modified if necessary. We'd have to resubmit that to the county. Um, and I'm looking for Mary to confirm that with a shake of the head. That's correct. We can modify that plan throughout the year, whatever our expenses are. But ultimately, you know, we have uh, expenses internally. And uh, for those who were impacted by uh, utility payments and things, I think the governor had already taken actions uh, to, to ease the, the, the uh, payment and payback requirements, uh, which we're continuing to implement currently. Uh, as well as, as Amanda identified tonight, some of the CDBG CV funds for those who can, um, who can be approved uh, based on what their income levels are uh, for potential relief through the RCS program that she uh, discussed in that, in that uh, uh, presentation for the annual action plan. Right, but when this information um, came out a few months ago about getting this, I had asked that we had a conversation about how we can best spend the fund and it was said that we weren't going to do anything with it until we had our meeting in October to see how everything was but now there's a detailed plan that was submitted to the county um, the, the, the plan was required in order for us to get the reimbursement and it's required the date when is the submission September 1st so it would not meet the October deadline for our financial um, so our fi financial uh, 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 workshop that we're going to do so it was our intent to get this plan submitted bring it to the board which we're doing tonight for your review and consideration and any kind of modifications that y'all want to do um, case in point the nonprofits other municipalities some throughout the state have given a little bit of money to their nonprofits um, some of them are some of the larger uh, municipalities but uh, we're bringing this before you tonight with a plan of how we have spent and plan and intend to spend the money uh, that we're getting and um, if we need to discuss it and change and modify that plan in the in the uh, future, we can do that. It will be audited by our auditors to ensure compliance uh, at a later date, probably at the end of the year when we do our audit. Uh, so um, it's really kind of still up, up for discussion if that's what you're uh, intending. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I would think it would be better to kind of have a conversation because we really need to be able to help some of our marginalized community members that are still suffering and with the detail of be able to the different ways we can utilize the, utilize the funds that was the whole point of asking a few months ago about us having a conversation mr stevens could maybe you provide some detail on what the expenses are that's outlined in this document so i mean i see the various departments with different amounts listed and and i want to point out too that Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is help, helping to offset some internal operational costs that the COVID pandemic brought onto the city. We did not furlough any employees. We didn't lay anyone off. Everyone got a paycheck. So does this help cover some of those expenses? Um, it, it, it does. It doesn't necessarily uh, restore any kind of loss of revenue, but it does, uh, um, I guess, reimburse us for some of our expenses that we've had, specifically some of the time expenses that we've had with our staff to the COVID-related items, as well as material expenses and even uh, some of the uh, uh, facility improvements we've had to do uh, to, to allow interaction between the public. I know Mary's, and Mary, you want to come up in detail just a little bit further, if you don't mind, because uh, you, you're the one that spoke with most of the department heads and had all of them submit these items to you, so you can probably detail a little further than me. But uh, some of those capital items and improvements to our facilities uh, at the, at the uh, CAPS office, at uh, uh, development services, the interactions where we have public in and out, in and out, in and out. Some of those improvements were necessary for us to maintain safety of our employees and so forth and so on. Yeah, so the couple of the, so I did send a, a, the, 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 the uh, plan to each of the department heads and ask them, you know, is there anything on this list? And there's a list of items that are qualify 
for this grant, and it will be audited, and it, at some point if we do something that doesn't qualify, we will have to give the money back. Uh, primarily, we cannot use it for, to help offset utility, uh, uh, unpaid utility bills, and that was uh, a shame for us to hear because we kind of initially thought that would be a, a, good, a good use for those funds. So it's primarily just for the city itself to be, be prepared and to offset the cost that we have to go through in order to, to uh, deal with some of the COVID restrictions. We are looking at ways to make more contactless contact with, uh, 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 with our employees, I mean with our customers. So how can we provide services in a contactless what matter? We're looking at making some improvements to our phone system in the customer service area, for, for instance, so people can actually call on the phone, find out what their balance is, make their payment over the phone. That was part of what happened when we, when we uh, introduced a new uh, uh, credit card system a few weeks back, was so that we can uh, work on some more contactless uh, ways that we can do business. It's for people who choose to do that. We also have opened up the doors in... Uh, at, uh, over on Fort Totten Drive now, and we have social distancing, and there's just been some expenses with some, we've had to put up some plexiglass uh, windows, and we've some, some hand sanitizers, and they're getting ready to, actually, I think Matt started today, they're going to do some uh, reconstruction of the driveways and the uh, parking lots there to kind of get the traffic under control. So those are some of the expenses we have. There's also some, there's, we're going to do some remodeling of some of the other buildings so that people can come in, and it can be social distancing and contactless as much as possible to make it safe. The other thing that's one of the other costs is I think uh, Sonia had reported that we've averaged about three, a little over three employees per payroll who have been out of work uh, for because they've been qu required to quarantine. Either they are tested positive or they have some reason they've been required by, to quarantine. Um, and those folks, we do pay them. So this does reimburse us for those costs as well. So that, that's some of the ones that were, that were uh, included in here. I'm going down the list here to look because I don't have all of them memorized. I know the fire chief sent in some expenses. Basically, any of the public, uh, any of the police and fire expenses, as you can imagine, what they might have when they're having face-to-face -face contact with people on a, day, on a day, uh, daily basis, just supplies to keep them safe. There are two categories on here that are a little confusing, and I actually talked to the county about them. One of them was uh, laptops for distance learning for school kids, and the other one had to do with providing food for citizens who may need it. Um, and he assured me those were the types of activities typically that, that would be done by at the county level. They didn't expect the cities to take their funds and do those because those aren't typically the, the types of things that cities do. I don't know if it means that we could or, or couldn't if we choose to do that. I can certainly call that and ask that question again. Uh, but though, basically the, the list here of, of, of eligible items include county, the types of services the county provides as well as the types of services that the city provides. Um, and the county received three point. Yeah. Uh, three point something million dollars so we're getting our percentage share of that yeah. so that's probably where some of those programs would be used for the for the the, the children's expenses it, yeah, this, i don't think this, it makes sense this money can also be expenses. used for purchasing um ppe for, what? Uh, what? for police fire and anybody yeah. else that would be in contact yeah yeah, yeah lot, and, and, yep. and medical expenses. And will, it, will it reimburse us for some of the expenses that we've already incurred? All, yeah, all the way back to March. All yeah. the way back to yeah. March and all the way through June. Till December 30, 30, 31. December. Okay. Yeah, so we've got nine months worth of those expenses that this will cover. And we, I, it wasn't hard when I, when, I got the, uh, when I got the results back from the different department heads. We went well over what they're going to give us, and so we just sort of shaved I back. I just was and, kind of... Wondering why so police and fire had forty-seven, forty-eight thousand dollars each, something like that. But but parks and recreation had a hundred, what, one hundred sixty thousand dollars. I mean, oh, woman here, she have a question. Yeah, I was saying. So these funds are being utilized to um, reimburse expenses we are already had. Correct, correct, as well as any anticipated expenses through December thirty-first. Okay, I don't, again, like I said, I don't understand why we didn't have a conversation. We have a fund balance that has money in it. Yes, it would be great to be reimbursed, but these funds could be utilized in a way that are directly impacting the community. Medical, let's get some testing out here. I mean, I don't understand why we didn't have a conversation to discuss how we can best use these funds. Well, it's not too late. I mean, we can still, I had, I had to give them a plan 
a budget with a budget attached to it by September 1. We certainly can ad amend that plan in, 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 yeah. as you see fit and adjust the budget as you see fit. Okay, stuff like just, that. It's just, just so I'm very clear, we, it did, was it three weeks ago that basically this got, oh, yeah. it was like, it was, yeah, hey, was here you go, by the way, we need a plan by September 1, throw it together real quick for us and uh, what your expenses have been and anticipated expenses. So I think, um, R1 Harris, I, I, I hope that you will feel that this is the conversation. Um, we can continue to have conversation, but ultimately by September 1, we have to have a plan submitted to the county or we don't get 497,000. Right. They'll spend it some other way. Um, so Right, and I, I, under, I understand that, Mark, but when I reached out to you and you knew about the funds were coming, you didn't say that we had to have a plan. If that was the case, then I would have advocated for us to have a joint meeting or have a meeting with a few people to discuss how we can, as aldermen, think about using these funds for directly impacting the community with COVID. I mean, yes, it's great to get reimbursed, but there's still people suffering and testing. There's a lot of stuff that could be done that we haven't done. We're just accepting it and putting it in the bank to clear what we would have put out, but people are still suffering. I'm, I'm happy to put whatever in the plan the board directs um, if you want to have that discussion. There's no other discussion, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to make a motion that we adopt the budget ordinance amending amendment for the coronavirus relief funds. Second. Motion and second. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Best? At um, our, we can later discuss this at our October session. So is, is, would that be a problem or do, are we concluding our conversation on this tonight? I believe this is to, if I'm wrong, at least get it into the budget because we have to, we have to make room for that amount of money to receive that amount of money. I know. So I'm looking at it that way. We can. Can a plan be amended, we I reckon, is the question. Yes. And yes. Take your yes. It can be amended at any time. And then at ultimately at the end of the fiscal <clears throat> year will be audited next fall. We, just, we have to spend it by December thirty first. Yes. So we just we, as long as we can as long as we can make that happen. If we don't spend it, we do there it's very clear that we we need to pay it back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Beagle. Yes. Motion carries item number 15. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 15 is a resolution approving a utility relocation agreement with NCDOT for the US 70 Havelock bypass. Uh, NCDOT has requested the city relocate its electric utilities to facilitate highway construction of the US 70 Havelock bypass. Preliminary engineering costs are estimated at $81,800. Similar to agreements approved by the board at their last meeting. Um, this agreement recognizes and establishes the estimated cost and terms for reimbursement for, uh, from NCDOT. The balance of the reimbursable engineering and construction expenses will be forthcoming as a separate agreement. Uh, and I think uh, y'all all received an email that I sent earlier this week that had all of the projects kind of summarized uh, with what some of those reimbursable expenses. I think the mayor had mentioned that at our last meeting, so hopefully that was helpful. Yeah. So, so all these funds are reimbursed by the state? Yes. Not at all the funds. I'm not going to say that, but for for this particular one this, here, this I think seventy have a bypass is. Yeah, I think these are the eighty-one thousand. Fibers. I don't know if fibers going to be. You need to come up here, please. I don't know if the fiber is going to be completely refundable if we have to get into the fiber system out in that area. Um, but the electric. Do we have fiber all the way down there? Yes, we do. Yes. Wow. Okay. So then I'll make a motion that we adopt a resolution approving a utility relocation agreement with NCDOT for the US 70 Havelock bypass. Second. Motion and second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, let's have roll call starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Item. Yes. Motion carries item number 16. 
Thank you, Mayor. Item number 16 is an amendment to the 2019 Electric Improvements Project Fund. Capital Project Ordinance will appropriate funding for expenses related to the DOT utility relocation projects. As recently discussed, the city will relocate some of its electric and fiber infrastructure to facilitate some of the DOT's roadway improvement needs. Most of those expenses are associated with electric uh, relocation uh, will be reimbursed by DOT. Um, while the uh, total costs of the projects have not been identified to date, uh, the amendment provides for estimated costs at $2,301,814. There's a, a memo that's included in your packet. I'm sure that Mary or Charlie can help answer any questions you may have. Well, my only question is, or request, is that you make sure y'all do everything you can to make sure that somebody else is paying for it besides the city of Newburgh. Yes, sir. I can assure you that we're already on that one. Yes, sir. There's no more discussion on this item. The mayor would like to make a motion that we consider, not consider, adopt an amendment to the 2019 Electric Improvement Project Fund. Second. Motion and second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Des? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Dingle? Yes. It's got item number 17. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 17 is an amendment to section 46-2, discharge of firearms or pellet guns of chapter 46 of the Code of Ordinances. Um, changes are being requested to be made to our Code of Ordinances to include a new section for the allowance of indoor firing ranges that currently does not exist in our code. Um, and there's a brief memo that's been included in your packet from Mr. Ruggieri and uh, Mr. Ruggieri and Mr. Davis uh, and myself would answer any questions the board may have regarding this. Is this something that you guys were just looking at and decided that we didn't have it and we needed to address it or do we have someone that's actually going to be interested in the I think the there is range? some interest in it. Two requests actually. Wonderful. So then. <laughs> well, I, I have a question. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll direct this to you, Mark. Sure. <laughs> sure. The, when it says um, discharge of firearms, I know you cannot discharge firearms within the city limits. So how did it come about of particular areas where you will be able to go and discharge firearms? Is this not the one? I, I think what this, so essentially we have code that is all encompassing of the entire city limits that says you can't discharge firearms anywhere in the city except for there's two locations i think uh one is out pleasant towards hill, pleasant north hill north and road. another is down past to burn past to burn yeah. uh, out towards where the the the, the blue water rise uh, development is that was the only places and those were for hunting reasons only that were specified however um being that there's a no discharge in the city limits um that meant that you technically could not have um an indoor firing range because you would be discharging a firearm in city limits so therefore this codification change needs to occur uh because of the allowance of being able to fire inside and you got anything else? Alderman Best, your, your, your question though was how do we identify the areas in which you can do this yes. we have a zoning classification within yeah. c3 that allows for indoor entertainment activities mm -hmm. this would be an indoor entertainment activity but because you can't discharge a fire in the city, you can't have that activity. So with this exception in, in the discharge of firearms statute, now this, the C3 zoning will apply to this activity. And it would so, be allowed in the C3. Yeah. Okay. So where is this proposed area within the Pleasant Hill community and the North Glen Burnie Road area? Because you got those two listed here under the explanation. So I'm wondering where did that come from? How, how you arrived she's at talking those? About the that's the code that's stuff the that's been in there for years. Uh, oh, yeah, right. okay. that, that's not new. That, that's okay. in the existing ordinance where you can go hunt. That's there for hunting out in the rural parts of the city. Okay. You can shoot deer, you can hunt. Um, those are allowed. This doesn't change that. Okay. All right. I, I want to know because yeah. I didn't, I wasn't yeah. aware of how this came about, period. Yeah. That's been there for 30 years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey, what, Jeff. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say just one follow up question. Up for you so this does not change the fact that you still cannot discharge a firearm 
you cannot outdoors see. within the city unless you're out. Of unless understood. Are, besides those two, that's exceptions. right. You cannot this discharge does not a fire change it anyway. unless you are in an indoor range after you adopt this. Okay, uh, Scott. Before you sit down, I want to ask another question as well. <laughs> sure. Okay. Now we all are aware of the growth on the west end of New Bern. Now you're saying Pleasant Hill is a rural area, but it's actually a city, mm -hmm. which maybe some in-depth, far-out rural portions of it. Right. Now, how can this be changed for us having an area where people can go hunting once you get all of these potential housing areas coming? Is that something that we're going to have a challenge with down the road because you're saying this has been in effect for 30 years or more? Strike it. We'll just strike it. Okay. Whenever you want. Okay. Whenever, whenever you want. All right. Part of those, when, when that part was annexed, Right. Folks tend not to like annexations and they like their hunting. So one of the compromises you make is you allow for hunting even though you are annexing. But your point is there comes a day where hunting is not appropriate because mm -hmm. the area has grown. And exactly. when that day comes, and it may be now, we need to go back in and do a little surgery on that. And we sure do because um, there's a lot of development out there and there's a lot of homes coming in. I just and see the potential there yeah. of hazard. Where it Especially on this side. Yeah, I, I know. I know. Out past the burner, there were uh, Warehouser had hunting licenses, you know, 30 years ago out there, and that area is is actually grown quite a bit as well. So the time may have come to, to take both of those out. And, and I'm also looking mm -hmm. on the other side of the road for Lake Tyler as well. Yes, we ma'am. Okay. Yeah. All right. You don't Thank want you. to take them out yet down on that way. <laughs> What was that? There, oh. Well, there's there's quite a bit of hunting down that way still. There is. Is that area on the Astor? I'm talking about uh, old airport road area down that way. Exactly. There's a large portion of that area down there that's, uh, you know, wooded lands that's mm -hmm. inside the city that the, the, the homeowners use for dove hunting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. but it's, I, it's kind of nerve-wracking when you can look out your back door and you see somebody <laughs> going across the field with a rifle. Sure. You uh, know, I mean, it's kind of nerve-wracking. Yes, ma'am. So that's something I think we need to highly address. Just mm -hmm. just so you know, like, if you look at the back side of Greenbrier, mm -hmm. that's not the city limits. So people that live on Pine Valley Drive can see that exactly what you're talking about. They can look right out yeah. the back door and see people hunting behind yeah. them because it's not the city. And, and get, that's something we, get, we would never be able to control unless we were to annex that in. That's right. We get phone calls all the time about gunshots being heard behind Tabern over there, which happens to be in the national, a lot of us in the national forest lands. Exactly. Right? You know? exactly. But I do know there are several people that down around the sand pits and stuff that have, right. you know, um, dove hunts for sure regularly so yeah. but I have another question and Jeff and and Jeff maybe you can help me answer this one but I, what about black powder in the state of North Carolina is that considered a firearm maybe you should include that in this ordinance then because if not people can take a black powder gun and go out in their backyard into burning and shoot something right Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, you, what Jeff is saying is our, our ordinance goes down to pellet guns, so I'm comfortable that, that black powder is covered in our definition. Well, we, we pick up pellet guns. Okay. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion we adopt an amendment to section 46-2, discharge of firearms or pellet guns of chapter 46 of the code ordinance. Second. Motion and second. Is there discussion? Seeing none, let's have roll call starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries item number 18. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 18 is a resolution approving the addition of a street light on Brookshire Drive. Uh, Rosanna Cash, a resident of Brookshire Drive, requested additional street lighting at the cul de sac of her street. Uh, the Department of Public Utilities evaluated the area and determined the current lighting does meet uh, the city's light standard. However, um, as we typically do, the Police Department uh, also provides a recommendation based on their evaluation 
and they did recommend installation of an additional light for security and safety purposes. The estimated cost of installing a light is $2,095.18, and the monthly utility charge for service will be $20.28. There's memos included from Mr. Bouchard in your uh, this packet, and we'll be happy to answer questions. Mr. have questions. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt the resolution approving the addition of a street light on Brookshire Drive. Second. Sorry. Motion and second. Is there discussion? See none. Let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Motion carries. Let's go to item uh, number 19. Appointments. Uh, Alderman Bingle? Uh, none tonight, sir. Alderman Astor? Uh, I'm sorry, all the woman here, so I'm sorry. Um, I know that uh, Candy Ward resigned from the Stanley White Advisory Committee on August 26th, and um, there needs to be a new appointment. I had someone come to me and um, was interested, and that was Turk Stewart. Is that a motion? Um, yes, I would like to make a motion to appoint Kurt Stewart to the housing, I mean, to the uh, Stanley White Advisory Committee. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, the same. Do you have any other appointments? Alderman Harris? No, not at this time. Okay. Alderman Ash. None tonight, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Kinsey. None tonight, sir. Alderman Bass. Yes, um, also, um, I have, uh, I wanted to ask, uh, I guess I would ask uh, Foster, with the Stanley White Advisory Committee, is there a number of members? Is there a set number of members for that committee? There is a set number of members that was established in the resolution that the Board of Aldermen approved back in June. Okay, and that is 11, 12? Because I also, um, when I got this notification, I also had an uh, individual that wanted to serve on this advisory committee as well. So I didn't know if that was going to create a problem with actually allowing another slot. If so, yeah. then... So a new resolution would have to come before the board to change the, the amount of people on that committee for that okay. to happen. Well, I'll check with this individual and see if she is still wanting to serve on this committee and then so we'll handle it at that particular time thank you yes ma'am and i don't have anything else sir. okay alderman odom none sir okay uh attorney's report city manager's report i have uh two things uh one i wanted to give the board a quick update on the opening of facilities um we're going to be discussing with staff tomorrow about opening our facilities beginning monday next week that way we can have the week to prepare the remaining part of the week to prepare uh I will say that um, I'm going to discuss the, uh, some, some other limitations as far as that opening uh, with our public safety folks. I want to really sit down and, and boil down into their organizations to make sure that they're not exposed any further than they need to be uh, with the police and fire because we certainly don't want to be uh, having a pandemic that occurred similar in nature to Clayton that happens in our fire police departments because we still need them, sir. But otherwise, uh, we plan on opening City Hall. The Caps building has already opened up at Fort Totten for customer uh, service and then, you know, we'll be open the others, uh, uh, HR and development services, which technically we've been open the entire time uh, by appointments only. It's just walk-in city, typ typical uh, walk-in traffic we've kind of uh, uh, been restricted on so but anyways we'll be opening that up on Monday um, unless the board wishes uh, to do anything different um, the other thing uh, that I was going to mention was uh, um, we've we've I've heard it multiple times here people have referenced the date of the October summit uh, we need to set that date um, so that everybody can get it on their calendars we're less than a month away if you're going to do it then in the first of the month um, if you're going to do it towards the middle or latter, we'd have about a month left. So just wanted to, uh, to, to make sure and remind the board. Well, one of the biggies was what got approved tonight, so. Yeah, no, I mean, know. let's. Uh, I think we have a lot on the agenda, though, so I think it's going to take a while. Tuesday, October 6th. I'm good with that. Okay. I'm good with that. What time? Um, are we going to be able to set up a Zoom? Because I will be uh, four days post-surgery and not able to attend. I would like to be able to see what's going on. I don't, I don't really 
That's great. We should be able to zoom her, shouldn't we? Yeah. Um, we can zoom her in. Uh, it'll be televised too, like all the other meetings have been. But we can we can definitely try to set up a zoom. Did you hear that? Are you good with that, Alderman? Yes. Yeah. Is it that, that is it going to be at Development Service or no? That would be here. here. Uh, yeah, we, yeah. We try to we set it up here. Okay. All right. Then if it's going to be at City Hall, then I'll just. Is it, and it's going to be recorded live, right? It'll be recorded. It'll be live. It'll be Facebook live, like any other okay. meeting we have. Yep. All right. That's fine. What time? Yeah. Six we start at a little earlier, maybe. Five o'clock. I don't care. I'm retired. <laughs> I wouldn't even mind. I don't think we're going to go for a few hours, so I wouldn't even mind. Four. Four o'clock. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we schedule a special workshop located at City Hall on Tuesday, October the 6th at 4 p.m. Second. Motion and second. Is there discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Friend, are you going to say that? Motion carries. Um, Mr. Stevens, um, getting some complaints about the Eckerd's building over across from the, the old Eckerd's drug store uh, a lot of activity over there um, do you need the board in any way to give you any direction on any housing authority items um, any uh, my understanding is they might be using our facilities or is there anything along those lines that we need to um, give you any policy direction on as far as our, our helping them out in any way we can partnering with them for better of affordable housing in New Bern and it, it, it's it's entirely up to one of the board members to to do but um, some of the board members have requested that I look into um, the potential of allowing the housing authority to have their meetings here it's ultimately uh, the board's decision of whether they want to allow the housing authorities to have their meetings here and then I've also checked into uh, the cost for them to um, uh, televise and and do their own uh, shows I guess if you want to call it that on their own Facebook live and what that cost is I forwarded that information to the interim executive director uh, Theresa Lee as well as their chair of their board uh, so I'm waiting kind of their decisions at this point and I think we have a meeting set up or potentially going to be set up for sometime the latter part of this week uh, to discuss that uh, and those costs but ultimately I think the board still needs to make a decision as to whether or not they want to allow the housing authority to have their meetings here um, because uh, they typically have their meetings on the third Monday of the month at 430 which means that the facility would have to be staffed and, and some people would have to stay over for that meeting uh, because uh, we would I'll, need I'll do anything we can to help them for the betterment of yeah, housing in neighborhood but. yeah I think it's important that our citizens know what's going on and they're able to view it that's why I've been urging them to do something you know more public than what they do so. Okay. I would hope we'd be okay. Do you need a motion on that, Mark, or uh, just direction of the board would be great? I would. So, is there? A, is um, a, well, I have a question. So, if the housing authority is going to be meeting there, Mark just said that if it goes over, it's going to be staffed. Yes, we're working with them, but I mean, what about the coverage for pay for the employees? So, um, the part of part of the Facebook live costs requires a would require Colleen to stay and work that um, so she had incorporated uh, some of her hourly cost into um, that figure for her to be staying here so ultimately she would be the staff manager that would be here to close up after the meeting is completed Alderman Harris all the financial information has been given to the Housing Authority showing what the cost would be for all of the above Okay, so when will we get a response back before we make a decision? Um, well, I mean, we can like do that, that but if they're not they're willing to pay the cost, pay then, or, you know, we, we can I make the decision. You. If they're not willing to pay the cost, then that negates, you know, we can give direction okay, to so allow ours, them to do it. Ours is based on where we're okay with it, but here's the information on what we're, what, what we're expecting. Correct. I believe that's already been given to them, correct? Um, it it okay. has been, and that's part of the discussion I think that needs to happen on Friday. 
uh, if their intent is to move forward with having their meetings here and it's okay with the board, but they don't want to do the Facebook live streaming, then that means that there will be staff necessary for, to, to hang around to close up afterwards. Um, uh, City Hall. So therefore, if that's the case, then we would need to negotiate what th their compensation for whatever that's going to be, along with um, the Swagget, uh, or basically the video that they do on our City CTV3 uh, website uh, and, and on our uh, um, live CTV3 uh, channel. My, my thought, and again, I'm not trying to get far away. Um, money's important here, but you know, I just wanted to partner and facilitate the opportunity for the housing authority to use our facilities and obviously use our uh, public forum. Um, again, the end result is better housing, more affordable housing, safer housing for our citizens. I don't think we're casting a stone here for 10 years or something. This, I mean, my, my thought was just let's start the process, start the conversation. And, you know, probably six months the housing authority will know from there where they want to go. We can, we can discuss policy changes and decisions a little more in detail once they, you know, get in here and see how the process happens. And then they might like it, they might not. Again, I'm just uh, trying to offer the opportunity for more discussion and end result, more, more units, more inventory in our city. And I totally agree, but they still should be responsible to pay for staff because they're not part of the city. You appoint them and there's a budget and they need to make sure they budget funds that they want to be able to utilize the building and the equipment and things like that. So that's just my thought. Yes, ma'am. So, so Mark, after Friday, you will know, you will have feedback from the Housing Authority and then... Yeah, assuming discussion. we have the meeting, yes. Okay. I mean, the meeting's not set yet, but that was that's kind of what everybody's working towards is either Thursday or Friday having a, having a discussion on this. And then we'll know at that time whether or not they want to share the cost, their portion of it. They will have to absorb their portion of the cost of if they okay. want to do the the, 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 the additional meetings. So we've gotcha. got to add additional meetings to what it cost gotcha. us, so yes. Okay. And it, it's to the tune of about... Um, and, and please don't quote me on this. It's about six hundred, yeah, I think, yeah, a that, month, that and three like thousand more or so a year, okay. or 6,300 6, initial costs. I'm sorry, this feedback is getting sixty-three hundred in initial capital cost, and then you've got about six hundred dollars a month after that. They do the Facebook Live feed with the embedded uh, uh, encoder and all that stuff. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on the city manager's report? No. Let's go to new business, Alderman Odom. Nothing tonight, sir. Alderman Bass. Um, yes. <laughs> Is the chief still here? Oh, there he moved on me. <laughs> Um, Chief, in the past you have worked with uh, with me and others about the speeders out on Highway 55, and I do know it's a, it's a highway, <laughs> but is there any way that you can make some connections with the Highway Patrol to see if they can set up some type of surveillance out there or something? Because I am afraid that someone is going to get killed right there at the daycare center. Um, the cars are coming in and out of there, and there are speeders out there, and I'm afraid that it's going to be a serious accident there, and somebody may lose their lives. So I know you worked with us before, and if you can yes, look into that, I would appreciate it. And I know the citizens, and I know the daycare owner will be most happy with it. We're certain to do that. Thank you very much. And that's all I have. Okay, Alderman Kinsey. Nice, nice, Alderman. Actually, I, I have one thing that I want to share with the board, and it's dealing with FEMA. Oh, we have an appeal in place with FEMA for somewhere in the tune of, of $800,000, maybe $900,000 that was denied. And one of the reasons it was denied was because we have to submit our appeal to the state of North Carolina. 
the state of North Carolina has to submit the appeal to FEMA. Well, one of the reasons why it was denied was because FEMA said the state of North Carolina was four days late submitting it, which isn't true. We, they have the documentation that it was submitted in time, but that's not the point. The point is that FEMA has 60 days to respond, actually 90 days to respond back to our appeal, and they, are, they denied our appeal based on four days late, and they were 54 days late getting their required dead meeting their required deadline to respond back to us so that's how they're working they they're dinging us for four days of being late which was not our fault was the state of north carolina's fault but yet they were 54 days late responding and answering our appeal and that's all i have okay bureaucracy old woman harris nothing tonight there okay I have one thing, um, and we've been talking about enforced parking in downtown. I told you we were going to go back to downtown business, and we met at the end of the month. And so, uh, Chief, uh, enforced parking, wherever it is, is, will resume Monday the 14th. So we will be back to two-hour enforced parking in downtown New Bern, and we'll be hopefully back, back on board then. Now, we will still leave. There's a few... Um, curbside pickups and I'll get with you on those the ones that still want their curbside pickups they'll have one space instead of the two still marked we, some of the restaurants will continue to have that but they'll, they'll, we're going back to two hour parking hopefully I'll be working with Colleen to get the word out and we'll be uh, notifying everybody through the downtown business group that we will be enforcing parking okay anything else yes, sir. Okay, at this time, is there, uh, do we need a closed session tonight? Is there any, uh, any other business to come before the New Bern Board of Aldermen at this time? Motion to adjourn. Second. second. Motion to second. All in favor, motion to say aye. 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 All opposed the same. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs>